Efficiency Experts YouTube. We just want to achieve. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Efficiency Experts Roundtable Discussion. Uh, we haven't done this in a little while so there's a lot to discuss. We're going to be going through the February behind the scenes as well as the polls that have already been concluded this month and polls that will be announced later in the month. Um, First, we want to talk about the Demon Drop Table improvements, which just occurred uh, with the release of the Abyssal Wand and Orb, Omid. So yeah, the Abyssal Demons recently got a rework for the Drop Tables, and the only noticeable uh, changes are the Gem Drops, which have been uh, put on the normal Drop Table now. Uh, they drop a lot of Rubies, Diamonds and dragon stones as normal drops, no emeralds or sapphires. So, a gem uh, bag may be beneficial to take to the task. Um, they, they also have a wand and orb now, which are substantial money currently and definitely making uh, Abyssal Demons worth doing. One of the disadvantages to this update are it's very minimal, but they have uh, they they stop dropping a lot of uh, orts basically. So people who did did uh, orts daily for with abyssal demons uh, will have to probably get them another way. That's all. Okay, so as Omid said, the new one in orb came out, and they'll likely retain a fairly high value as they fill. Um, a need for gear better than the cheap level 70 gear, but not so expensive as Virtus. Um, so those will likely be good, especially for people who do daily Abyssal Demon tasks. And as Omid said, the orts aren't really um, so consequential because you can always do Water Fiends or other Slayer tasks for uh, your orts. Um, so the next update discussed in the BTS for February was Heist, um, which is a new minigame. Mark? Yeah, before we go there, I just want to say I'm like 2,000 abyssals dry with one, with no wand and orb doing my uh, daily tasks. But yeah, anyway, uh, Heist uh, gameplay looks uh, really nice and it looks to be very similar to something from Assassin's Creed. So now what you basically do is there are two teams, robbers and guards, and guards have to investigate and talk to different NPCs and... Uh, their aim is to find and arrest the robbers. Whereas robbers have to evade the guards by wearing disguises and uh, escaping them. And uh, the gameplay seems really nice. So if the rewards are generous, I would prefer this over thieving and hunter. Gunner, are you going to talk about rewards? Yeah, so um, basically we saw in the BTS video um, a player having played two games purchasing uh, bonus hunter XP and they were getting 2930 hunter XP per 10 points and they had gained 500 points per uh, over two games so basically we just need to find out how long these games are and then we can establish a an XP per hour now if the bonus XP in thieving is 300k or higher it will likely be worth doing though just barely especially well Definitely for people who don't enjoy training thieving. However, if the hunter is around 350k, it will likely be worth doing. And there appear to be possible trim requ requirements in terms of um, perk unlocks. Uh, so that is definitely something that remains to be seen. Um, yeah, and the gameplay definitely looks cool. It looks like something from Assassin's Creed or Prop Hunt or something you'd find in another game um, as a mini game. Um, so basically, once we see the, how long the games take, we'll know, first of all, if it's worth doing, and second of all, if it's boostable, which <laughs> could be very overpowered and uh, open to exploitation. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, finally, the, the last real update for February is the Grandmaster quest, continuing the Robert the Strong storyline. Uh, Mark? So yeah, we even got to uh, vote uh, on on the quest. Uh, if you guys remember, uh, Celestial Dragons won by like 38%. So this this quest is supposed to have a lot of lore for those of you who are interested.
And um, basically, we're going to um, lo be looking for the last uh, Dragon Rider, the last of its kind. And the requirements are 79 magic, 74 summoning, 67 dungeoneering, and a bunch of quests. The rewar rewards uh, include uh, Dragon Rider. Whoa! The rewards include Dragon Ride Armor, Amulet, and a new training area with uh, the dragons that we boarded on. The dragon is going to be uh, dropping some summoning supplies, probably like water talismans, etc. So this will be fairly interesting to see. What are your thoughts? Yeah, right, most so... people, oh, man. most sorry to butt in, but most people voted for the Celestial Dragons, uh, hoping that it will drop more charms. Most people don't actually care about the summoning supplies, and I think they're going to be wrong and disappointed. I think the gem dropping dragons would have been a lot beneficial since crafting is the most expensive uh, skin in the game currently. But that's all I have to say on it. Right. So I think I think Omid's right. And with crafting being 50 GP per XP uh, and rising, I think the uh, gem dragons would have been more beneficial. However, the celestial dragons may actually drop enough summoning supplies for them to be worth doing. Uh, especially if they're good enough XP to be um, made a slayer task or, you know, something like that. So uh, just to recap, so the votes that concluded were the demon drop table improvements where demons obviously went out, the heist map, which Canifis won with 27% of the vote, and Celestial Dragons, as Mart said, had 38% of the vote. Now, there were a couple other polls that have yet to be acted upon that we'll see the results of in the future, which are the legacy combat mode, which we've seen a lot of support, especially from people who previously relegated themselves to 07 because of the old combat mechanics and uh, old user interface. So currently the legacy combat mode has 80% support and that's really high. Um, I don't really agree with that mostly because what we're seeing in the combat beta with the revolution tweaks to momentum and you know basically allowing players to get a lot of the benefits from EOC without any of the effort and the reintroduction of special attacks makes it appear to me that the beta is essentially pre-EOC pre combat. So I don't think that legacy mode should take up too much of the devs time that could be used for better uh, and bigger uh, upgrades to the game. However, the old interface will be welcomed by a lot of people. I suspect that won't take very long, however. Does anybody else yeah, have any opinion? Correct. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people are blindly voting into this. I don't even think they should have released a poll until they released a beta. Yes, they might have to, you know, put in the dev time to create the beta before, you know, the community even wanted it, but it's a very huge deal. And um, the major issue people are uh, you know, concerned about uh, balancing issues like, will you know, how good will it actually be? Will it be better than momentum? Will it be how close, you know, DPS wise, will it be to using abilities? You know, all these matter because someone's right. spamming. <laughs> One second, so, I'm gonna take over. Yeah, sure. So um, what Omid's talking about is one of the modes will likely be obsolete. So if Legacy is too good, people aren't going to have the motivation to use abilities. But if Legacy isn't worth using, then the player's already attached to PVM and not really PvP, because nobody PvPs, let's be honest. Anyways, um, so most of the players attached yeah. to PVM will not use a mode that is inferior. So, Omid? It's good, know. though, because... Because it's you know, a lot of people are currently playing RuneScape, having huge difficulties with abilities. So I'm glad they'll be able to uh, help those type of people. But again, if the balancing issues are not met, it can be a huge uh, negative to the game and people who right. put a lot of effort into it. But it's getting a lot of support from people, uh, pre EOC players. So I mean. I mean, 07 players, so it seems to be getting a good vibe so far, so I'm having high hopes. 
Anyways, that's it. Right. Uh, Thank you, Omid. Bail? I've got something to add as just like a general type of thing. Um, I don't really mind these big updates that have, you know, a lot of influence on how RuneScape is going to turn out in the future if they, one, don't really interfere with the current meta game, but two, there's this fear that I have of just logging in one day and everything being broken. And I remember this specific update. It was a while ago, right after EOC had been released. There was an update that they, um, the Jagex released, and they added, I think it was when they added the armor, the power armor and the tank armor. This is when they did this. And I logged in, and everything was just chaos, basically. I think they had like some bug where White Boots had 75 prayer bonus, if, ever, if anyone remembers that. And all the values were just all over the place. It seemed like something they had just thrown together and just put in the game as fast as they can. And I think as long as Jagex, you know, they mind themselves when they make these updates, and they don't just push out updates to push out updates, then I have a little bit of faith left that they um, they will be able to keep it, you know, yeah, the current state yeah. of the game as it right. is. Right. So as as you said, um, <laughs> releasing updates bug free is very important. However, another thing that's very important is not subjecting uh, RuneScape to the tyranny of the majority. So a, a large portion of the RuneScape population is blissfully ignorant to changes in gameplay and um, you know, emergent mechanics in the game. And they vote based on nostalgia and they vote based on how they feel the game should be, which is often how the game used to be, because that's when they enjoyed it the most, when they were younger, when they didn't know as much about the game, and it was more enjoyable to play. So a lot of people are blinded by that, and they vote for things like Legacy... Not necessarily everybody, but a lot of people vote for things like Legacy Mode because of those nostalgia goggles. And I don't think Jagex should leave things that are largely important towards the future of the game to something that could be tainted, to a vote that could be tainted by that uh, mentality. Um, so another vote that recently concluded that was very important was the double XP weekend or the double drops weekend. Now there was an option to vote neither, just for those people who always rag on Jagex for voting yes, yes, or yes. Um, there was an option to vote neither. However, we saw a large support for double XP. Do you want to talk about that a bit, Bale? Yeah, the double XP versus double drops, um, I think double XP won by a fair majority. And if we were just to take uh, this at its most basic, what the what's the most thing you're going to get out of drops, right? It's GP. That's what everyone's hoping when they're voting for double drops. They're hoping to get GP. So it's really a poll of XP versus GP. And in most cases, uh, XP will win out by far. Because if we're talking in GP, it's not even double GP. Like, it's not double GP versus double XP because it's just some GP because drops aren't even guaranteed. It's not double chances, it's just double drops if you do get a drop. So, it's not consistent. Uh, well, that's true. It is double GP. It is, it is double GP because if you average it over, you know, a given yeah, amount of time, it is double your, GP. Expected, your expected return but is it, doubled. However, uh, it's still not worth let me, it. Let me, let me say one thing first. The, you were getting to a good point, which is people are wanting double drops to make more money, okay? The problem right. with that is you save more money by training a viable by skill XP. than you would make <laughs> from getting yep. double drops. And that's really I think why I saved like, double XP won so much. I think I sold 800 mil worth of my herb law, 200 mil herb law supply today, or like in, uh, last week, because of this. So yeah, that's how much I made from double XP. Yeah, and that's those are good points, and it also ties into my last point about this poll is that double XP is something that literally everyone on RuneScape can get value from, right? Everyone that's in the game right now can get some value out of double XP, whereas not everyone can get some value out of double drops. So it helps everyone. 
True, true. And especially as I read the forums more, there's a dichotomy between the elite level players who are seven manning hard mode Virago and the players who want to PVM, but they don't have the capital. They don't have seismics. They don't have ascensions. They want to get involved. They just, they don't have the resources. And uh, Bale is right. The average player can take advantage of double XP just as much as anybody else. They may not be able to train, uh, you, they may not be able to cut D-stones for the whole weekend, but they can They can certainly get return, whereas with double drops, uh, Glacors are going to be packed, and they may not be able to Nex or uh, Virago or uh, Rise of the Six. So that's something I'm all, that we I'm saw in action. forced to include another uh, something. Uh, a lot of people... Also, just don't enjoy skilling past you know, 99 or what, whatever, just don't enjoy skilling full stop. And some people also enjoy just seeing drops and just seeing, you know, two du double drops is very exciting for some people. Yeah, let it be, you know, next drop or bandage drop. But, yeah, small yeah. note on that. I, I knew you were going to mention that. Um, that, that we talked that... about that last time, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, like last the next topic, last bonus XP slash double drop weekend. I remember that very well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah um, we did. I remember. So the next vote that is still going on uh, is God. the Elf City skill focuses. Yes, uh, Bale. If I could just interject here for a minute and sure. the fact that uh, the XP weekend did win, so it's going to be coming out on February twenty first to twenty third. All right. Thank you very much for that. So everybody, be ready. You've got about probably doesn't work days. <laughs> So, oh yes, prayer doesn't work, and all bonus XP. Even though everyone should have known that, but yeah, I mean it never has. But so no gilded altar, no acto functus. Uh, bonus XP is frozen. Avatars do not work. However, skilling outfits do work, and even the devs don't know if refer a friend bonus works. So <laughs> that remains to be seen. Um, I actually think refer a friend bonus will work because it, it is a flat increase and it stacks with ava it stacks with outfits it stacks with everything um so i'm thinking that refer friend 10 percent xp bonus will work which you can get that with bonds e.g you email a friend to start an account they start their account you give them a bond to become member and you get seven days of 10 percent bonus so that's just something to keep in mind um Oh, okay, so where I was starting with was the Elf City Skill Focuses is a poll that's still going on right now. This is a diamond poll. Um, Mart, do you want to discuss this? Sure. So um, we get uh, there are uh, eight different skilling clans in the Elf City, and each uh, client will uh, be offering high level skilling methods uh, in two different skills, right? So it is up to us to choose two of the skills for one particular client. The choices are cooking, fire making, fishing, mining, and smithing. And the current state is that smithing is uh, leading with uh, 40%, mining is second with 28%, and fishing is third with 22%. As there's still four days left in the poll, I urge everyone to vote for fishing because we already have war bands for mining and smithing, and fishing just seems like a better option. Right. So basically, as Mart said, there are going to be eight skilling clans, well, eight clans in the Elf City focusing on two skills each. So think of the um, Keldegrim Consortium. There's going to be eight factions with two skill focuses each, which makes me think that this vote is almost n inconsequential. Uh, the v skills that we don't pick may be attributed to other clans or they may not. But there are going to be 16 skills included in the Elf City, like for high level training methods. So, one that gives me great hope that the Elf City is going to be a huge game changing update, which gets me really excited. But as Mart said, fishing somehow is losing to mining and smithing, which most efficient players warband, and most players who don't do warbands still have access to fast. Um, methods for smithing and mining LRC is faster than fishing um, for most players doing barbarian etc. In fact for those who don't do C2 fishing fishing is the slowest skill in the game so the fact that it's not getting a lot of votes is kind of perplexing to me. 
Um, I think a lot of players are voting because smithing and mining are complementary skills, and they want to see, you know, them in tandem. Uh, so yeah, that's my opinion on the matter. It's just um, I would like to see it uh, for there to be uh, sk you know, skills to uh, beat the rates of C twos in my opinion, like woodcutting, fish. Well, woodcutting can is you know better to do use, but uh, fishing mainly. It's currently really good to do C twos and. Personally, I don't think it's right to uh, for it to be the best way to train it, but I would like the I would like to see something better. And Crystal Tree was a huge disappointment, as it doesn't even come close to C twos. But I don't think there will be a day where something beats C twos a uh, long time, anyways. Okay, so yeah. The next vote that's currently ongoing is uh, choosing Yelp's fate. That poll is quite irrelevant, irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. I think both me and Gunnar chose to retire Yelp's gracefully just because of all the XP he has given us in the past. What? Sadly though, <laughs> currently the Pe winning option is People to are so Yelp. bad at being mean. Like, if you want to be cruel, put him up in the freaking circus. Don't kill him. Yeah. Kill him is, killing him is too easy. Exactly, yeah, if you people... add, add uh, the circus uh, wheel and just killing him in a quest uh, together, it's like 60% of uh, the population wants to see Yelps dead. Anything? No, but the circus thing, you'll be able to kill him and hurt him over and over again. I'll just do the, yeah, like, you know, the level just, 99 yeah, throwing thing five cool. times just to th throw a couple of knives into him instead of doing 99, 90 and etc. But yeah, moving on. I mean, the whole thing is just kind of contrived. If if we're talking, if we're going to kill him or not, it doesn't really matter because they're making him like into a martyr. You know what I mean? Because people have said... They're trying oh, to please the crowds. Right. People have said, oh, school of fortune, we hate this real world trading. So they're like saying, oh, we're not really going to kill him. Or uh, we're not really... Um, gonna have this in the game but and that's something that will be talked on later right so we're gonna in discuss that killing really... killing yelps is symbolic of something that isn't really there um exactly <laughs> yeah so um one thing that we thought about that could be done with yelps is he could either be made into a really really difficult boss like insanely overpowered or incredibly incredibly weak so everybody in the game can kill him and he just dies in comical ways, <laughs> which I think would be pretty entertaining for those who want to take out their aggression. Um, so yeah, uh, one thing that we're going to discuss in a little bit is what replaced Squeal of Fortune, which is Treasure Hunter, and who replaced Yelps, which is Alice. Um, so as we were saying, Jagex is killing off Yelps, most likely, um, in order to try to eliminate the negative connotations associated with spins and quiet anybody who's you know gonna focus on keys because keys and spins are exactly the same treasure hunter is exactly the same as wheel of fortune um but i mean that is something that is just done for marketing purposes i mean i don't think anybody's too upset about it if anybody is legitimately upset about it it's because they didn't understand what treasure hunter was to begin with um there are several polls that remain for the month and they were briefly mentioned in the bts just as bullet points so do you want to start with those bail um yeah the holiday items for loyalty points is pretty interesting and i think we have three divergent things that Jagex could do with this. They could, for the first part, they could um, make copies of rares that people already have. For example, the Black Santa hat that we saw not too long ago, or, you know, a Black Santa cracker or something like that. And that would, you know, kind of anger some people that already have the normal Santa hat or Christmas cracker. And the second thing they could do is they could make new holiday items that have no value like something like a big carrot or bunny ears, uh, something that we haven't seen before. 
And the third thing could be they make new holiday items with value, uh, things like the crown of summers or um, birthday cake hats or Christmas tree hats, what they released. And really through all three of these, um, it just kind of raises the question, why are we selling holiday items in the loyalty store instead of doing them through um, holiday quests or holiday little, you know, little updates that they do that they've always done. And does anybody else have any? Right. So um, basically, one of the things that I want to mention is a lot of people are thinking that this means we'll be able to buy bunny ears for 200k loyalty points or we'll be able to buy a scythe for 150k loyalty points, which to be, it wouldn't upset me um, because holiday items we're always meant to be, you know, a fun little ad addition to the game. They're cosmetic. They're not really uh, valuable because they're untradeable. They are simply to show that you participated in that event. And the problem with selling them for loyalty points is that a lot of people who were at those events feel that, you know, not only was their time wasted, but they kind of lose some of their attachment to that item. Now, I don't think that's necessarily true because they will cost a lot of loyalty points if they are put in the store and loyalty points do have value and they are given to players for being loyal to the game um so i don't really see the problem with it uh and it remains to be seen how players feel about it but i have a feeling that most of the players currently active are not tenure veterans and they are going to vote in favor of buying holiday items for loyalty points. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, Mart, did you want to add to this? Yeah, as a person who owns both uh, Bunny Ears and a Scythe, I don't really mind it, them making it uh, available to others. I don't really wear it and I don't see it as like, you know, a symbol of a status. Okay. But that's just me. So... Yeah, so, I mean, there are definitely differing opinions. Uh, reading the forums, it's readily apparent that some people are <laughs> vehemently against the idea, and there's some people who are, you know, supportive of um, the possibility of buying these holiday items in the loyalty. Um, another, another poll that we saw was Ultimate Combat Abilities, which are coming from the Zerosian quest line, the Freneske Unlock, which... The choices were between defensive abilities, uh, group abilities, offensive abilities, um, things like that. So the damage dealing abilities won by a long shot, which further shows the <laughs> simplistic thinking of the RuneScape population. Um, do you want to briefly touch on that, Omid? Yes, I'm so angry at that. There's two other amazing options and the ultimate... Uh, damage increasing uh, abilities were picked. There was the group abilities which could have been anything, they all could have been, you know, complex, you know, changed everything relating to PVM, like things like area, an area, you know, like a sunshine which increases the whole team's damage, whoever's inside of the sunshine maybe gets a 10% damage buff. Maybe, um, I don't know, some kind of heal other mechanic, anything like that. And the health sacrifice is the thing that I wanted because it sounded like huge, huge DPS potential. For example, if one of the ideas I had was like uh, a 50% sacrifice of your total HP, meaning if you have a total, you know, your max HP is 10k, you sacrifice 5k of that for, for example, 800% damage, which is substantial but not too overpowered. Um, obviously a range, sorry, it would be like 600 to 800% damage. But yeah, it's pretty much two other great options and they choose something that we already have, which is, you know, Berserk, Sunshine and Death Swiftness, which is, we're just going to get something like that again. It, the only potential benefit that would, may come from this is if we get something like Berserk for range and mage, but that's about it. Do you have any thoughts on that, Gunnar? Anyone else? <clears throat> well, yeah. If any, if, does anybody else have any opinion on that? We're going to be talking more about PVM in particular when we go to our first official segment of Omid's PVM Corner, but 
while we're here? It, it just seems kind of generic to me. Like, everything that we have currently in the game is, like, it's either a heal or damage, you know? It's one of those two things, and just adding another damage ability, it isn't fresh, it isn't new, it's just another damage ability. Right, so here's the main issue that I just thought about. So 80% of the population is voting yes for Legacy Combat Mode, which means they're not particularly interested in EOC, a lot of people, or they don't like using abilities. So why they're voting for simplistic abilities and not complicating the PVM system, not complicating combat, is like obviously they're going to vote for that. However, I don't think they should have a, like, the majority of people should not have a say in this if they're not going to use abilities. Um, the, as Omid said, the group um, abilities would have been amazing because anybody familiar with other MMOs knows that EOC is incredibly simple. Like, maybe for the RuneScape population it's a bit too complicated, but for, compared to most other games, it's incredibly simple. And adding something to make it a little bit more complex would be very welcome um, for PVMers and for those looking to have that active engagement with their bossing or their slayer. And it's just a shame that, again, we're subject to this majority that <laughs> votes on nostalgia. And it's, it's very upsetting and it's very frustrating. And it's one of the reasons why I don't think leaving huge decisions to the populace was a good idea. Um, however, there's one other poll that we want to discuss that is coming up later in the month that won't have a big impact, really, but it could be a good addition. Do you want to mention that, Bale? Yeah, the divination familiar is a possibility in the future. And, you know, it could be low-level summoning or high-level summoning. It doesn't really matter, but... The, what it could do is it could boost um, your divination level straight up, which would in turn increase your energy collection rate and your, your memory collection rate and your enriched rate. Or it could increase those things straight up. And I think really any of those things would be welcome because, as we all know, divination is a pretty slow skill. Right, so the, the current highest level skilling familiar is the granite lobster correct me if i'm wrong and i think something even higher than that would be <laughs> quite welcome for the summoning skill as well as just for high level players with summoning options toggleable they won't be as annoying as avatars at poison waste but i'm sure a lot of people will complain about a million wisp uh familiars following everyone so that's going to be exciting um so now we're going to go to something we haven't done before, and there's a lot of issues uh, from the past couple of weeks that we want to cover, and this is Omid's PVM corner. He's just going to briefly go into detail about what's going on in PVM and RuneScape currently and his opinions on that. So, Omid? All right, so we already covered the demon drop table improvements, so we're going to go straight to the next one, which is the range buff. So range buff was really really well done in my opinion although it didn't need the constant tease which you know destroyed the market essentially um, so what happened is that they buffed um, snapshot and one of the things I didn't like that they buffed I don't know if it was on purpose but fragmentation shot actually does five hits now five hits which is incredible for a basic making it one of the best basics in any style in the game. Think about it, Slaughter only does 4 hits even though it does 100 to 250% but Fragmentation Shot does 5 hits now which is 100 to 188% tripling if the enemy moves. So one of the biggest controversies going on right now is that people are demanding Concentrated Blast for being nerfed. Concentrated Blast being one of the probably the best uh, basic ability in the game for anything literally since it does two hits at, you know, every time before you can use a another ability making it over 200% 200 damage since it has the crit bonus as well so if they nerf Concentrator Blast uh, range will become better than uh, Mage everywhere 
including Virago, which would destroy uh, seismic prices, which would essentially make in, uh, Virago dead content. Now, people aren't thinking about this when they keep saying that they want Concentrated Blast nerfed. Concentrated Blast is the only thing Magic has right now. If they if they want to nerf Concentrated Blast, they will have to nerf Fragmentation Short or make Combust as good as Fragmentation Short and they need to make Detonate as good as Bombardment to make it completely fair. That way I would be content, but if they nerf Concentrated Blast just because everyone's nagging JX2, it would mess up a lot of things. Now that's for the range buff. DK spawn timers have, has been increased substantially. Now you should be doing DKs in a low pop world where you will be able to kill DKs constantly. This has increased the kills per hour roughly 120 to 160 kills per hour depending on what kind of tier weapons you have and making it one of the best tasks in the game since it's huge GP per hour right now. The GP per hour right now is ridiculous. It's around 10 mil per hour compared to the usual 6 to 8 mil per hour on average. And lastly we go to the beta. Now the beta currently is has introduced special attacks. Now the special attacks are nice and all. They're pre they they would be useful for PvP situations where KO is required, but in terms of PVM they're very, very, very bad. They have a debuff after you use one, which they also stack on top of each other, which reduces the amount of adrenaline you gain from basics by 2%, making it 6% per uh, ab basic ability used. And it does it for 18 abilities. So if you use one, just one special attack, you will have your adrenaline reduced for 18 abilities, making you lose 32%, no, th my maths, 36% adrenaline on top of the adrenaline you used to use a special attack assuming you only use basics which isn't realistic so a potential 36 percent adrenaline loss per special attack for example if you use AGS twice you uh, will have your adrenaline reduced by two percent for 36 abilities it's a huge deal and I think they should completely remove the whole uh, adrenaline debuff because it's ridiculous as special attacks aren't even OP for how much special uh, adrenaline they use already. For example, AGS using 50% adrenaline for 250% damage, whereas Assault does 218%, I believe. Is it 218%? 219% per hit for four hits, minimum of two hits, which basically what I'm saying is that in the time you could do 250% damage, you could do 219% damage twice but one of the benefits of special attacks is that it is quicker than abilities it has a low uh, uh, shorter cooldown than abilities you can actually use uh, two AGS specs within two ticks I actually recently uh, tested it with Vesta Longsword I did five, uh, four specs in matter of no time I hit 5k, 6k, 6k, 5k which was ridiculous because no one would be able to survive that in PvP. And remember it's a lot quicker as well. It's every two ticks. It's not the usual three tick ability cooldown. And yeah, Momentum Plus is okay. The queuing I would like to turn off. I'm glad they added a toggle because I would end up overlapping the queuing and if it overlaps even once it will confuse you, mess you up. That is not really needed. I'm used to uh, most people who played other MMOs are just used to you know light tapping, spamming, if you may. But that's it on my section. If anyone else wants to comment on any of them, you may go. Right. <clears throat> so as Omid went through what's going on in PVM today, I just want to mention some changes possible in the beta. Um, so currently, as Omid said, special attacks are not really worth using except for their KO potential in PvP. Um, one thing they could do, as he said, is completely remove the adrenaline debuff. 
However, we don't know what special attacks are going to be added for Drygors, for Ascensions, possibly for Seismics, which RuneScape is very bad about adding specials to magic weapons. But we do not know what the future holds for those. So I think as Jagex continues to tweak the beta and change special attacks, we'll see a lot of things change. I wouldn't be surprised if the Adrenaline debuff was removed, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if level 90 weapons were given fantastically overpowered specials. Um, that's something that remains to be seen. Just quickly, I want to go and talk about some minor pulls that finished recently. One was reducing the number of worlds, which was doomed from the beginning due to players who farm warbands and players who have home worlds. So anybody who has a home world is going to not vote to have it removed. And anybody who does warbands already has enough trouble with the amount of worlds that exist. They're not going to vote for it. So keep them as they are, meaning don't reduce the number of worlds, had 62% of the vote. Um, an another vote that finished was we saw the conclusion of Invention Skill versus Elf City, with Elf City having 54% uh, of the vote and Invention having 45 Uh I don't know where the rounding error was there, but, um, so yeah, Elf City won, which means we'll be seeing it in, uh, July, August, which gets me really excited with especially what they've been talking about with high level skilling methods. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of content there. There's a lot of lore, a lot of players have been waiting for that since, um, 2004. And it was just recently confirmed that within the light is a, a quest requirement for the second part of the city. Um, however, we don't know if everybody will be able to access the first part of the city or if you'll need MEP2. Um, so, again, we're waiting on Jagex. Uh, Bale, did you want to touch on that briefly? Yeah, the Invention versus Elf City poll is the big one. It's uh, the one that introduced us to this whole power to the players thing, and it's Elf City won with 54% of the vote, and it was close, which uh, kind of surprised me, seeing as we only just got Divination as our new skill. It's kind of surprising to see that so many players um, would want to see another skill released so soon. I think it was um, the time between Divination and uh, Dungeoneering release and Divination release was four years or something, and now it's only been four months and people want a new skill. It seems surprising to say the least that some people would be voting for invention skill, but it's not that surprising seeing um, from RuneFest people saw a lot of invention and I'm guessing that they said, hey, that looks cool, I'd like to see that soon. But anyways, Elf City did win, and I think that's better, that's the better choice. As it was previously mentioned, it would have the eight uh, round table things with all the skills, and it would be high leveling player, um, a high level place for players. And Jagex has said previously that they wanted to make it the new, like the Varrock for high level players. And I think that would be really interesting and really a good thing for RuneScape because I'd love to go there and just see all these white dots on my map and everyone skilling and doing mining and fishing. It would be so amazing. And like uh, Dragon Seance did say, um, it would be, it, it has the potential to become an update that would be very good for the longevity of RuneScape. And for that reason, I think it's great that Elf City... Right, so thank you for your opinion on that. There was another um, poll that concluded. Mart, do you want to touch on that? Yeah, so we got to choose the, uh, the spring holiday event. And the options were either to have a traditional holiday event that we most, most always do like, or to have a world event where uh, Brassica Prime uh, versus Marimbo battle it off. So obviously the world event won by quite a lot, I think. And uh, this is probably because people are just tired having the same kind of content in the uh, kind of Easter and uh, other type of holiday events. Right. You guys um, so, so I agree. Uh, seeing a gorilla versus a cabbage is a lot more refreshing than dealing with the Easter Bunny or a Chaka Trice or whatever Jagex <laughs> devises to be 
Eastery this year. Um, so I think it was smart. I think players chose something new and refreshing, and for once I agree with them. Um, so yeah, we recently saw the introduction of Treasure Hunter, which we um, touched on briefly. It is Squeal of Fortune. Uh, let's, you know, let's not dance around the topic. It is Squeal of Fortune reskinned. Uh, the only difference is that it is a lot, a lot better than Squeal of Fortune. <laughs> Quite Sorry. OP. And it's justified <laughs> in terms of rewards. So we, I had, um, you know, some data in terms of the stars you got per spins, uh, per keys, sorry. Um, but in the ca past couple days, it's become even more apparent how overpowered it is. I have gotten in the last three days with my four daily keys an average of 3.5 uh, prismatic stars per day. Now, just thinking about that, I've gotten four prismatic stars twice and three prismatic stars twice. That is insane. That means I'm averaging, like, between medium, small, and large prismatic stars, about 30k bonus div a day. Now, that is pretty crazy if you think about players who actively buy keys, whether it be with bonds or with real money. This isn't particularly, you know, upsetting to me, mostly because, one, Jagex is a business, and two, most high-level players do not spend money actively on keys, nor do they spend bonds, uh, like in-game wealth on keys. However, it is indicative of a frightening trend that potentially Jagex could make it so players need to spend real money to become competitive, which just doesn't exist now, besides possibly the refer a friend bonus, which we have to wait and see if there's a five week per year cap on that. Again, not that big a deal. It's exactly what Squill of Fortune was. We've all been playing the game since Will came out, so not a big deal. But if, <laughs> if it gets any worse in the future, it could be a big deal. Um, and that's my opinion on that. Does anybody else have any opinions on Treasure Hunter besides OP? Yeah, well, we well, mo I think most of us first thought, okay, they're gonna remove Squeal. They're gonna bring in something lighter, something you may have to work for, as well as you know, you know, get the keys themselves. You know, have to. Some people came up with the theories of you know, you have to find the chest like a clue scroll or something like that and you have to work for it in some way but that instead we thought you know we thought they bring in something lighter something people won't instantly hate but they brought in something even worse than the squeal which was surprising i'm surprised people aren't hating as much as i have been seeing i haven't been seeing <laughs> much hate on forums and stuff i was expecting like total outrage but yeah I don't have much right. on that. Right. So, no, you make a good point, though. Like, players were so upset when Bible Spins came out. It was astronomical, the amount of collective butthurt on the forums. And it just doesn't exist now. I think it's because players are used to microtransactions in RuneScape now that when they see something like Treasure Hunter, it doesn't upset them as much as the first time they saw microtransactions. And I think that's why there's, what, like, maybe two active um alice hate threads that i've seen it's they're just there needs the to be a, it, it, yeah i don't think this is intentional though because if you look at some of the prismatic uh stars that you get actually gives the category like hunter sometimes instead of prismatic right so i'm assuming like is it meant to be hunter but it's like glitched out and it's actually prismatic i, I don't know yeah, I don't know if you've noticed know. If, or if anyone else has noticed. I've, but... I've totally noticed, but I had a theory that it was that you didn't get them in skills you had 200 mil in. Because I got a large prismatic star, and it said category runecrafting. I got 200 mil runecrafting recently, so I was like, huh, maybe they did something where you can't get bonus in 200 mils, which, first of all, no, makes it extremely... No, I don't have any 200 mils and... Extremely good. Yeah, but then I talked And about I didn't use my... Yeah, okay. So the oh yeah. yeah, which you reminded me. There's something which And they removed cash bags, I think. The, right? Yeah, oh, no. no no no, I was gonna go into that. So cash bags do still exist, but they're incredibly rare. 
Um, a clan member oh. bought 450 <laughs> keys, and they got two cash bags. Now, I'm not sure if you guys did... remember Squeal of Fortune, like, a week ago, but you would have gotten, like, 350 cash bags out of 450 <laughs> spins. So, I um... Think, I think the boob factor plays a big part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alice is probably a little better looking than Yelps. Um, she has a scar. What's up with that? I don't know. We, that's because she has to be mysterious. We 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 have to want to know her backstory. What's with her showing off her cleavage as well? What's up with that? I don't know. Sex sells. Um, but yeah, no. You mentioned something that is. And she just thing. made her like a cup to see what people would say. <laughs> She's Either only like a cup a, or f cup. Like just a, make it ridiculous. She's only between like a B and a C. I wouldn't give her too much credit. Anyway, yeah, I know, but um, she, they, they Jake's probably did their research <laughs> and actually looked up what you know what the average guy prefers, and that's probably the they answer. Could have done a poll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want. We want a poll. Treasure Hunter is being released next week, and we're having a hard time determining Alice's bust. Please help us. <laughs> a B C, triple E. Anyways, um. So another thing about Treasure Hunter that's different from Squeal is you can freeze categories, which I just freeze Dungeoneering and Constitution, as even if you get rewards in those skills, they, they aren't worth any money. At least for something where I'm 200 mil like construction, if I get planks, I can sell them, um, and it's actually, I get some return instead of just getting a lamp I can't use or a star I can't use. Um, so I think that... The ice hearts were a good idea. They're just poorly implemented. And the fact that you use them every spin instead of like earning a thousand from skilling and then permanently freezing a category, which actually makes players work for something, uh, instead of doing that, again, it's just something viable. And at least it's the microtransactions are set apart from the rest of the game, which I appreciate, even though they made it look like something that would be more at home in RuneScape than Squeal of Fortune. Um, so yeah, that about covers everything we had to talk about. Does anybody have any closing notes? All right. So again, it, we went a little long today, which is a, you know expected because we had so much to discuss. Um, we have three new polls coming out in five days, which we're you know, probably going to make another roundtable discussion to talk about that and Heist or the gr new Grandmaster quest. The bonus XP weekend, again, is February 21st through 23rd, so I hope everybody's planting their spirit trees and getting ready for that. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and I look forward to hearing your questions. Please guest in Efficiency Experts CC if you want to join or just talk about the game. So yeah, thanks a lot for listening, and happy scaping.